um, and feed back your, you know, what you've learned in your findings or just be inspired um, by parts of the lesson to uh, try yourself to incorporate climate crisis issues into, into your teaching whenever we can do that again, of course. Uh, so Sean's introduced herself. I want to let uh, David Hackett, who's a number, another member of this lesson study team, to just introduce himself and tell him what part he had to play in this project. So over to you, David. All right, cheers, man. Um, yeah, well, I suppose I had minimal enough um, help, but it's really exciting to be involved with sort of a collaborative project. I can sort of advise everyone to sort of try to collaborate as much as possible. There's loads came out of it. Um, and I'm really looking forward to trying to teach this lesson um, next term or term three. Um, and then back over to Ben. Thanks, David. So as I mentioned, I was lucky enough in my last placement uh, last term to teach a maths lesson that married maths issues and a climate crisis issue. I taught it to my, my year seven class and I started the lesson by with an open question. I asked them what they knew about climate change and the climate crisis. And Alan put his hand up and he said, it's bad because if all the ice melts and all the water in our seas, all the water in our seas will rise. If water rises up, Australian parts of North America might sink. If only some of our politicians were as worried as Alan. So the research focus for this lesson was using maths to teach pupils about schools' carbon emissions. And what I thought was the best way for you to actually understand this lesson and how it went and how it works is to have a go at yourself. So the first task of this lesson, in it, your head teacher wants you to reduce your school's carbon emissions. Your school currently emits a thousand tons of carbon dioxide per year and your budget to do this is a little bit ambitious but it's 500,000 pounds. Okay so what we're going to do is put you into breakout rooms and after you've said your awkward hellos you're going to click onto a link that Sean's going to put in the group chat and this link is going to take you to this page here. You've got a folder that says task one and a folder that says task two. Okay so we're going to click on this task one folder, which is going to take you to two documents. One of these documents is an information sheet. And this information sheet contains five different ways that your school is responsible for CO2 emissions. So for example, uh, you've not got very energy efficient boilers in your school. Uh, replacing these boilers with energy efficient boilers would save 299 tonnes of carbon dioxide from being emitted into the atmosphere each year and it would cost £150,000 to do this. Okay, so you've got five problems and five potential solutions. Now your goal is to spend as much money as possible to reduce your school's carbon emissions by as much as possible. Currently there are 1,000 tonnes per year. So what you're going to do is you're going to go over to this response sheet uh, and as a group, you're going to fill in this response sheet. Now, if you get put into breakout room number one, you're going to work on slide number one, breakout room, sli uh, room two, slide number two, etc. And what you're going to do is decide which of these solutions you think you should buy to reduce your school's carbon emissions by as much as possible. So if uh, I was, I'm just going to demonstrate for this first row, if my group decided that we want to replace the boilers in this first cell, I'm going to write replace boilers. Um, how many CO2 emissions would this save rounded to the nearest 10 tonnes? So if you remember, it said it would save 299 tonnes of CO2 per year, rounded to the nearest 10, gives me 300. How much is it going to cost? It said I'm, it's going to cost £150,000. How much CO2 emissions have I got left to eliminate? Well, I started with 1,000 tonnes, I've eliminated 300, I've got 700 now left to eliminate. How much money have I got remaining? Uh, I started with £500,000, I've spent £150,000, so I have £350,000 remaining. Okay, so you're going to do that, you're going to fill in this table and you're going to left be, and you're going to reduce your school CO2 emissions by as much as possible. Okay, you're going to be left with two figures down here, one is going to be CO2 emissions left to eliminate, and one is going to be how much money you've got remaining. The goal is not to save money, the goal is to spend as much of it as you can. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Sean, if you now want to send a link uh, in the chat to those folders, 
and you're going to go into your breakout rooms. You've got 10 minutes to have a go at this. I gave my year sevens 20. So hopefully that will be enough time. Okay, uh, thanks, Ben. I'm going to open up the breakout rooms now. Um, so yeah, I've put the link in as well for everyone. Alicia and Isabel, have you got the link for the breakout room? Alicia, I think you're room two. Isabel, room 16. How was that, Charlotte? Did that make sense? Is that all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was great. Cool. Can I don't know if I can pause the... Um, Recording, yeah, I'm just going to pause the recording whilst they're in the breakout rooms. Okay, we, <laughs> hopefully I'll remember to press it. Okay, welcome back everyone. Um, if everyone could put into the chat their final figures for uh, CO2 emissions and money left over. So how many CO2 emissions have you still got to, to eliminate and, and how much money have you got left over from that task? So maybe whoever was the scribe, if you want to put... Uh, your group's final figures. And I'm just going to have a look at the chat to see how we did. Yeah, okay. So most people finish with 50 tons of CO2 still left to eliminate and 15,000 pounds left. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to task two that I also did in my year sevens. Um, in task two, your head teacher wants you to spend the rest of your money on solar panels. He wants them to be installed on the school roof. Now there are two companies in Manchester that sell these solar panels. And this table gives you some information about the solar panels that they sell and how much they cost. So again, I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms. And again, your job is to spend as much money as you can to um, save, uh, to, to eliminate as much CO2 as possible, bring those emissions down, your school's emissions down by as much as possible. Okay, so Sean's gonna put the same link in the chat and instead of clicking on folder one, you're gonna click on folder two. And in folder two, again, you've got an information sheet, which looks like this, and you've got a response sheet. Now on this response sheet, again, one scribe per group, you're gonna write down how much money left you had um, how much money you had left over in task one and the CO2 emissions left to eliminate after task one. Those are the figures that you just put in the chat. Then you're going to choose one of the companies. I'm not going to demonstrate this time uh, and write which company you choose here to buy your solar panels from. Uh, the cost per set of solar panels, the CO2 emissions saved by one set rounded to the nearest ton, the number of sets you can afford, total CO2 saved per year in tons and the total cost. And that's going to leave you with final figures for, oh, sorry, whoever the anonymous, anonymous quacker is, could you just uh, hold off one second? I really appreciate the uh, enthusiasm there. Uh, so then you're going to be left with some final figures, how much money you've got left after task two, and the CO2 emissions left to save. Now, this figure here might be a negative number, and we're going to discuss what that means in a second. So you're going to be in the same breakout rooms. Uh, you're going to have eight minutes to do this activity. Sean, if you want to, if you want to send them into breakout rooms, good luck.
ask. Does everyone now again want to put their final figures in for task two? So did you manage to completely eliminate your school's carbon emissions? Did you have any money left over? Did you finish with a negative number? So again, perhaps the scribe from each group could put in your final figures from task two. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a look at the chat, see how we did. Okay, nice. We've got some slightly different answers. A lot of people finishing with minus six tons and a thousand pounds left. I saw that some of you were forgetting to, to round. Katie, okay, so I think Katie's group had to go at the extension task. Um, okay, nice. So th th there have been kind of some different answers come out of this and that's absolutely fine. And that's what I quite like about this task is that uh, we, you do get some different answers and it does lead to some interesting discussion about what is, what's the right decision. Here are some possible outcomes. If you had to go at the extension task, um, you can, so, and, and I should have said that, I should have said that if you finish early, have a think about that extension task at the bottom, but a big well done to those who did. If you had to go at the extension task, you can actually go back and see that if instead of emitting the recycling program from task one, uh, you can emit the cycle to work scheme that gives you more money to spend in task two to buy more solar panels. And so that, and allows your school to finish more carbon negative than if you'd um, omitted the recycling program from task one. And that's a nice little extension task that pupils can have a go at. A lot of you finished um, by buying the treeless solar panels and omitting the recycling program from task one, finishing net negative by six tons with a thousand pounds left. And I think the vast majority, the vast majority realized that the treeless solar panels were more cost effective than the Jinko solar. So well done. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit now on our process of planning and teaching and reflecting on this lesson, how it went when I taught it to my year sevens, and what they thought of it. And there's some really interesting pupil voice that we got. So we approached this lesson using a lesson study approach. And I know some of you already know what this is, but I'm just going to go over it again. Uh, lesson study is a way of planning, teaching and reflecting on a lesson. And it was developed in Japan and it's been used there for approximately 140 years. And for me, what makes lesson study, what really distinguishes it from just a detailed planning and, and, and teaching and a detailed reflection on a lesson is that there's a real focus on pupil methods and what we can learn from their methods and their thinking and how we can subsequently adjust our practice based on that. So lesson study has four main stages. Firstly, you've got the collaborative planning of a lesson. Uh, this involves the teachers and it involves people who are experienced in the process of lesson study. And um, during this process, you'll do research and, and look at the existing literature into what you want to teach you come up with a detailed lesson plan of exactly how you want this lesson to go. You then teach the lesson. And when this lesson is taught, there's meant to be lots of different observers in the lesson with a real focus again on those pupil methods and what the pupils are doing and thinking. There's then post lesson discussion, which is led by experts in lesson study who have the final words on the lesson. And in the context of, in the context of teacher training, you've then got revision of the lesson and reteaching the lesson. Uh, in a more professional context, the findings of the, le the lesson will be used to, to uh, alter the curriculum. So how did this lesson study approach apply to our lesson? So first, we had this collaborative planning, planning stage, and that involved myself, David Hackett, fellow Maths PGC trainee, uh, Sean Morgan, PGC, uh, Maths PGC tutor, and, Ro and Rosa Archer, both Maths PGC tutors at the University of Manchester. And they were our, the experienced members of our group in lesson study, they've written a book on lesson study, and they've gone to Japan to see how lesson study works over there. When David and I originally started to look into how climate crisis issues have been embedded into maths education and maths lessons thus far, there was a lot of just alteration of question stems. For example, instead of asking you to find the perimeter of a fence, it was find the perimeter of 
a solar panel. And what we thought was it's too easy for pupils to just skip over this question stem and get to the maths and not really engage with it. So we decided on a project about making schools carbon neutral. We wanted a climate crisis issue to be embedded into the fabric of the lesson. We developed a research focus. As I mentioned, it's using maths to teach pupils about schools carbon emissions. And there was so much planning and tweaking that went on in, the, in this planning stage of the lesson. But for me, the most important thing was that uh, the lesson study experts here, Sean and Rosa, kept reminding us to think about how each stage of the lesson relates back to this focus on embedding climate issues into our lesson. So as I mentioned, I was lucky enough to teach this lesson to my year seven class last term. Uh, just to give you a bit of background on that class, uh, it's an inner city school in a disadvantaged area of Manchester. It was a year seven mixed attainment class. There were 14 boys present and four girls participated via teams. And this was because at the time, all the year seven girls were doing the two weeks COVID isolation, unfortunately. And um, so of the eight girls in the class, four showed up on teams. So it was a blended lesson, which made it a little bit tricky, but uh, we got there. And, and just a side note on that, to get in the school that I was in to get half of the pupils uh, who, who'd isolate and get to get half of them attending via teams was considered a really good result. So that just shows how, how much a lot of these disadvantaged pupils are missing out when, when schools are closed. The lesson was a double lesson. It lasted an hour and 40 minutes. Six pupils in the class had English as an additional language and seven pupils in the class were on pupil premium. So when I taught this lesson, obviously the main parts of the lesson were the task one and task two that you lot just had a go at. It did also involve other parts. As I mentioned, I started the lesson by asking pupils what they know about climate change, what they know about the climate crisis. And this is where Alan gave us this, this quote. I then showed them a one minute video on a, a one minute news round video. And this was an introduction into the climate crisis, climate change, carbon emissions, and that sort of thing. And I finished this first introductory part of the lesson by telling pupils that schools are actually uh, responsible for a reasonable percentage proportion of, um, of the UK's carbon emissions. I then put the uh, pupils into groups and they all had a go at task one. Before task two, I showed them a one minute video on solar panels and how they work uh, before putting them into, group, into the same groups to have a go at task two, uh, we then collected our results. I asked each team to come up with a, a team name. As you can see here, they are in, in year seven. Teams team were the team that were, that were working together on team, on Microsoft Teams. We didn't get any final figures for them uh, because we were just having real problems kind of connecting and stuff. But as you can see, uh, all four groups did what most of you did in task one. They, finished, they, they chose to omit the recycling program they finished with 50 uh, tons of CO2 left to save with 15,000 pounds. We didn't get onto the extension task. So three of the four groups, Fortnite, the boys and take the W after task two finished uh, carbon negative by minus six tons with a thousand pounds left. Uh, the boys had some sort of calculation issue, which, uh, which meant they finished with 14,000 pounds. Not sure how that happened. Uh, Big Brains actually chose the, the less cost effective Jinko solar panels. So they finished carbon neutral with no money left. I, at this point, chose to introduce the terms carbon neutral and carbon negative when they finished on minus six and zero. Because finish on minus six is a little bit confusing. So I use that point to say, well, what does minus six mean? Well, it means that your, carbon, your school is now carbon negative. And I got them in groups to discuss what they thought that means before getting responses. We finished with pupil voice. I gave the pupils four questions to answer anonymously to get some feedback um, into what they thought about the lesson. So the first thing I asked them was, which math skills have you practiced today? One pupil said, I learned how to use money and get rid of carbon dioxide. Another said rounding and subtracting. Another said rounding I found very boring, which wasn't very, uh, yeah. So I'm gonna just give three examples from each from each uh, pupil voice question. The second question I asked was, did you learn anything that wasn't about maths? One pupil said, yes, that the world is in danger and we need to help the world and science. 
Another said, yes, climate change isn't maths. And I also learned about the greenhouse method. Now, some of these responses I've highlighted in bold. Uh, these are the ones that we, re that we picked up on, and I'm going to come back to why I've highlighted them in bold uh, later on, but see if you can see a pattern here. Another said, we learned a science lesson in maths about CO2. I asked them what they liked about the lesson. One people said, I like how Sir explains us, and it was fun, and we worked in teams. So this people clearly like the teams element of the, of the lesson. Today, I didn't really like this lesson because I like maths and learning it with Mr. Grant, which was, of course, very sweet, uh, but also very telling. I learned how to get rid of carbon dioxide, and it was the best lesson ever. I asked them what they didn't like about the lesson. This did break my heart. I don't like that sometime I know the answer and sir, don't pick me. It's very sad. One people said that it wasn't maths and the maths, it was hard. So I've put all the, the people voice responses that are highlighted in bold here. And there was a theme going on here. And that theme was that a lot of the pupils didn't recognize that what they were doing here was maths. A lot of them thought it was a science lesson and, the, and, and they, they didn't make that connection. They were rounding, they were subtracting, they were adding, they were figuring out what's cost effective. They were gathering data, they were modeling, they were interpreting results to draw conclusions, all these mathematical skills. And they didn't realize that they were doing it. They felt that this wasn't a maths lesson. And we found that really interesting when we obviously thought that it would be obvious that all this is, all this is that they're doing is maths. And, and it wasn't, and, and that's not what the pupils thought. So in our post-lesson discussion, uh, amongst lots of different tweaks we made to the lesson after I got to teach it, the main thing that we reflected on was this idea that pupils weren't seeing the importance of maths in this process. So subsequently, we've slightly adjusted the lesson plan and the lesson materials to reflect this new research focus. Our original research focus was using maths to teach pupils about schools' carbon emissions. Our new research focus for this lesson is teaching pupils about the importance of maths in reducing schools' carbon emissions. Um, and, and, and we felt that that was just such an important thing that a lot of them, a lot of them missed. Because maths, as, uh, as we heard in Kevin's keynote address, is there were so many ways in which maths is so important in this process of tackling the climate crisis. And it's really important that pupils get a handle on that. Okay, uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, and just wanna really quickly thank the other members of the lesson study team, David Hackett, Sean and Rosa, who unfortunately uh, can't make it to the presentation today. Uh, I want to thank Titus Murphy, who's a maths teacher who's been so influential and put so much work in organising this conference. And I know that they're not here today, but all of my, uh, my dear year sevens for letting me teach this lesson to them. Sean, if you now want to put a link in the chat to all of the lesson materials and the lesson resources, please do download this. And if you get a chance to teach it, that would be fantastic. I'm now going to leave these last 10 minutes for anyone who's got any questions, if, if you think, yeah, I'd like to teach this lesson, but what about this or have reservations about that, please turn your mic on and ask or, or put a message in the chat. Thanks, Ben. I thought I, I thought that was really great. And it's great that you, you're happy to share all of the resources because having those resources, it's much more likely that other people will have a go at the lesson, I'm sure. Um, so do use the chat. Um, if you have any questions, then um, I know Ben would be happy to answer them. Okay, so loads of thanks at the moment in the chat. Any, um, any questions? Or you can raise your hand. Can I ask a question? So I'm probably not on your screen. Yes. <laughs> sure, yeah, no, yes, I Chris. No, I, can... um, I was just going to ask whether it would be interesting to think about how you could combine this, so um, go across subject boundaries. So within the Kevin's talk, some people were talking about how can we bring together different subjects? So could there be problems where you connect up with science or you connect up with other subject specialists? 
So your collaborative teaching would be actually joining together around um, other disciplines and thinking about how can you bring that together, focus on a particular dilemma, a particular problem, and then teaching that in a sort of combined way. Yeah, and, and David, if you've got anything, if you want to respond to that, feel free. Uh, I, th I think that's definitely, uh, all I've got to say it, is that that's definitely a possibility. And, and not only is it a possibility, I think it's really important because this isn't just a maths lesson. It, it does have science elements. And uh, one thing that I did try to do was teach this. Uh, it, it didn't work out timetable wise, but there was a science training. And I thought, well, could she deliver the sciencey part of the lessons, you know, when I'm introducing things about car, uh, terms like carbon neutral, carbon negative, when I'm introducing what climate change, the climate crisis and the issues we're facing and schools carbon emissions, I'm not an expert on that. And so, yeah, it, it, it would be fantastic if, for example, a science teacher could come in and do that bit of the lesson. Um, Timetabling wise, it'd probably be difficult, but I, 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 um, I do think that's really important because a lot of these issues Aren't, it's not just a maths issue, you know. If you're going to teach a lesson on the climate crisis and you're going to teach it in in a history lesson, it's probably not just going to involve history. It's going to involve a bit of biology and a bit of maths. And um, so, so yeah, I, I definitely think it's important. Um, David, I don't know if you've got anything or Sean. Yeah, politics as well is another nice crossover, as yeah. Kevin was saying earlier about equity and stuff. So I, I think. When you start looking at it, you'll see a lot of cross pollination opportunities as well. Yeah, I think I think it's about finding interested people in the school as well. So finding out who, if someone runs an eco club in the school or something like that, then talking to other teachers and finding out that's more difficult when you're a trainee because you're going fresh into a school. But if you know there is a science trainee in there, then yeah, definitely uh, chat to them about what you're doing. And what you're hoping to do and try and collaborate thanks chris that that did come up in our post lesson discussion about the fact that um pupils quite often see lessons boxed off and i think that's part of the reason why they didn't see it as a maths lesson because there were quite a few science terms in there and so we we did discuss that um yeah and and bringing links together is really important Are there any other questions from anyone? No, I, I was just going to say, Sean, I really like that point you're saying, and Ben sent it to you, just about how it's linking the science and maths. So I teach my PGC science, but I've also been doing maths teaching with it. And I think it's this idea that a lot of kids in particular don't like science, some of the science subjects, because they have the maths element. So I think that's a really good way of like kind of hiding it in there. So they're still doing it and it's building enthusiasm and then they realise they're actually doing maths and maths is okay. So that removes some of the anxiety from it and it's a good way to engage in the class so i really i really like the lecture just now yeah yeah definitely thanks for that yeah i had a quick question um in terms of obviously the one the people that had the response of this isn't maths did you kind of get that feedback in the lesson in terms of needing to encourage them to work and stay focused and remind them that it was maths or were they quite happy to do the lesson and then that was just feedback you received at the end i it was feed it was just feedback i received at the end but it's funny you say that because in this lesson i did find behavior management more difficult than usual and it might have been because they thought for a whole host of reasons potentially which i'll say in a sec but it might have been because it's like, oh, well, this isn't a maths lesson. This is a project working in groups, ha, ha, ha. You know, and it did, especially in that task one, it did take me, a, it did take a bit of prompting for some to, to get them to, to get, to kind of get on with it. Um, but, but, you know, they were working in groups. It was the last week of term. It was just boys in the class, which actually made behavior management more difficult. Um and they were doing they, they were sitting where they weren't didn't usually sit so many different reasons um why why that could have been the case but uh but yeah As, uh, ben can i come in here 
as sure. an observer, because I was lucky enough to go in and observe the lesson study, I felt they were engaged with the task. I, I hadn't seen the pupils before. I didn't know the pupils and I felt they were engaged with the different tasks. Yeah. Could it also be reflecting the fact that they were more interested, they were excited about learning in this way, so it actually engaged them more and got them talking about things more? Was that? Did you sense that? Yeah, potentially, yeah. And, and there was some, there was one or two pupils who it kind of had the opposite, who it was like, oh, well, yeah, I've been put in a group with my mates, uh, ha, ha, ha. But, but I think for, for most, that was the case. Once they've got into it, once they've, you know, I think Tass wants a little bit of explaining, um, and, and I can think of especially this one pupil who is so quiet, never says a word, it, you know, is, is good as gold, like it works so hard. And he, this was the first lesson where he was putting his hand up and offering his opinion and, and answering questions. And his, his, his whole demeanor was just so different. Uh, and um, so potentially, so I think, yeah, potentially there were some pupils who it had that effect on. But are there any other questions? I don't know if any of the other physics with maths, I think there's three physics with maths here today or any other people who are not maths PGC students might want to ask a question. I just wanted to say, I think it's a brilliant um, example of bringing in sort of the whole climate change sustainability and showing how you can use maths, I think. And I love the way you changed the research question as well and the focus. Um, I think it's a really good idea and um, really impressed with how you've taken it forward. Thanks, Chris. And, and I, I think some, sorry, go on. Sorry, right. um, I was just gonna ask, compared to your other lessons that didn't involve climate change, how different was this lesson, do you think? Like in the way you taught it and the way you sort of delivered it, or do you think it was similar to how you would have normally taught a maths lesson do you know what i mean yeah also, well it, it was a it was a completely different structure because my my uh, the school that i was at were doing the, using this mastery approach and using these these same types of slides in the same the same mm -hmm. format to the lesson so yeah it was completely different it was harder of course because i put some so much time and effort into it and and i was mm. i was i wanted it to be i wanted it to be really good uh, yeah. and and I, I was teaching lesson in a way that was that was that was completely different to i'd usually taught it it was also mm -hmm. really fun because yeah I, I, because it was just like i this stuff is really interesting and the pupils are, are finding it really interesting and getting engaged with it um so yeah it was completely different um yeah, so I, I really, that, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, because I'm just thinking if if it's like, because it like my school, it's very structured the maths lessons, so it could be very sort of that might have been an issue with the behaviour as well, because they're not used to this style of the lesson, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm. Just. Uh, yeah, 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 and 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 I think at first again, uh, that that was a little bit of a challenge. They were sitting in different groups and stuff. Mm. Um, yeah. But I, I think, and I think as well, if you can make this more of a routine, perhaps you teach one of these lessons every half term or even more than that, then that just becomes less of an issue because kids get used to it. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I just want to say re really big thanks to everyone's really kind message in the chat. And uh, I've just seen Julian. So. And... Um, and yeah, everyone's completely right to, to thank David as well, who did, who did put a lot of work into this, even though he didn't get to, to teach it. Please, the, the main thing that I want to come out of this is just download the lesson resources that were put in the chat. They're also on the website. And if you can get a chance of teaching this, please do. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. If you get some, if, and, and give us your feedback, if you do get to do that, that would be absolutely amazing. I didn't ask this before, actually. Did you get any feedback from your head of department or the teacher, sort of the permanent member of staffs in the school? No, way too busy at that point. All right, yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah. Un unfortunately, no, due to the COVID cases, yeah. there were at least two, two or three members of math staff off. The head teacher was having to cover a, 
maths lesson. So the, the class teacher didn't stay in. Um, I know a number of the colleagues there, I've worked with them, so they were quite happy for me to be the, I don't know, whatever, the adult in the, the other adult in the classroom. So uh, unfortunately, I, th I think that was a real shame that, um, the, the, you know, the teachers within the school didn't see the lesson. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask one uh, quick question before we finish? Um, ben, based on your experience of teaching it with year sevens, if you're going to do like a similar thing with older year groups, is there any bits and bobs that you think would be good to like adapt or would you just do it exactly the same? Like yeah, I was, yeah, I was hoping that someone asked that actually. I did originally plan it for a year 10 uh, class and uh, I think the, the, the goal of the lesson is about instilling the importance of maths in this issue. And so you can, it doesn't have to be about rounding. It doesn't have to be. And, and so originally when I planned this lesson, um, when they were given the solution, the solution would say this solution reduces the school's car, reduces the school's carbon emissions by this percent. And they had to do percentage reduction. And I don't think it would be that difficult to therefore adapt it to different year groups and to different topics. You could do it as fractions. Uh, you know, you're, you're going to reduce, by buying the solution, you're going to reduce the school's carbon emissions by a sixth and get them to do that and change the table accordingly. And I think it would be really quite easy to just keep the layout and just, and just, and just mix, uh, oh, can't speak, and just meddle with the numbers. So yeah, I think that's definitely doable. Nice, thank you. When I was planning it, my year nine scheme of work had a module on test and conjectures. And that's like part of the White Rose Miles year nine scheme of work. So that was where I was gonna fit it in because there's modeling and stuff in there. Can I ask another question? Yes, Rich. Sure, yeah. um, so you've chosen to contextualize your maths lesson using climate as a theme for this one. If you're normally trying to contextualize your maths lesson, where would you go? Would you liaise with like what's been taught in other subjects and try and slot it in with that? Or would you just like look on the internet and see, or think in your own life? Where, or where would you usually look for examples? Uh, yeah, I'll have a go answering that. Um, I think that's that's a really, really good point. Uh, the whole goal of this was a focus on on um, climate issues. But how, how your question kind of speaks to me is how do we get pupils to see where all where what the learning is relevant, and and that's such an important thing. And I was just in a breakout room yesterday talking to a group. And I was kind of saying, I wish we had, I wish there were, maybe there is a book, but I wish there's a book that told us every single thing we teach in maths and we can just have a quick fire answer to why this is relevant uh, in the real world. And, and, um, the, and, and that's what I usually do. Like I, I, if I'm teaching, if I don't think I could answer that question before I teach something, I, I, I Google it and I do make sure I know. And I do make sure I have a really good response. Not, not just a response for the sake of a response, an actual response because I think that is really important and that's definitely a question that so many people have asked and I used to ask why are we doing this why is this important um, so so yeah I'll just try and make sure I I have a, a a response to that I'm not sure if that answers your question I think that's the best I've got Yeah, there's a couple of responses in the chat as well. And, and I think it's something that, I mean, one of the things we talked about with the, um, this green group that's working together is about putting things together. And that's one of the things I know in science that they've started to do, um, link up different parts of the science cur curriculum. I think it's Jerry, one of the tutors there with different climate issues. And so that's something that we could look at as a maths group, thinking about different topics and how they link in. Um, but yeah, there's some good, good um, links within there. I'm just looking at the time and we're going to finish the session at quarter past 12. And I um, want to tell you about some exciting lunchtime activities for the conference. So I hope that that's OK if we can um, look at that now and thank Ben for his presentation. Uh, I don't know if you want to come off mute for a minute because it was fantastic. So thank you. Thanks, Dan. Um, I love that. Yeah, great job, Dan. Well, 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 I certainly don't uh, think you're boring.
<laughs> 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 Very good point. And 